Here, Poilievre's criticism taps into fundamental concerns about limiting government intervention and promoting economic freedom. He argues that the carbon tax will drive up the costs of essential services like hospitals, schools, and emergency response, suggesting that government overreach is eroding Canadians' quality of life. Opposition. The Prime Minister is hiking taxes on home builders, on doctors, on job creators, and on farmers. And he's also raising taxes on hospitals and schools. The New Brunswick Premier is taking this Prime Minister to court because of the unconstitutional quadrupling carbon tax and the costs it will impose on snowplows, ambulances, heating hospitals and schools, meaning the loss of countless police officers, nurses, doctors and teachers. Instead of defeating the carbon tax in court, why can't we have a carbon tax election so Canadians can axe the tax? Uh, we've won multiple elections on that because Canadians know that the only way to build a strong economy is to fight climate change at the same time. His message resonates with those who value personal liberty and economic opportunities. For them, high taxes, particularly the carbon tax, are seen as a direct assault on individual autonomy and economic self-determination. Poilievre warns that this tax not only inflates costs, but places an unconstitutional burden on critical professions. Police officers, nurses, doctors. In contrast, when Justin Trudeau defends the carbon tax by pointing out that Canadians have supported it in past elections, it seems to overlook the real-world consequences many are facing. Winning an election doesn't necessarily justify policies that, in Poilievre's view, hurt the economy and infringe on personal freedoms. Trudeau's argument that combating climate change is vital for economic stability strikes many as detached, an elitist vision disconnected from the immediate financial pressures most Canadians endure. This clash between Poilivre and Trudeau exposes a sharp divide in how the public perceives the balance between government policy and individual well-being. Trudeau's focus on long-term, collective outcomes, like a sustainable future, presents him as a leader prioritizing global goals over immediate struggles. Yet for many Canadians, especially those in rural or working-class communities, the rising costs of fuel higher taxes, and potential job losses hit much closer to home, widening the gap between their everyday realities and Trudeau's policy ambitions.